Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palicka, international nail artist and educator here and today we are going to create another beautiful set of the nails, have a wee preview of it in here. Absolutely amazing and I hope you really enjoy watching it and you will learn something new from it. If you do, let me know down below in the comments uh, as I would like to know your opinion as well. Let's start! So time to clip the gems off and to do a fresh rebalance. So I'm just going to cut the gems. Obviously I'm working with my not dominant hand, so the things are a little bit more difficult. So I'm just clipping them off. And then we will do a nice fresh design on them. I think this part is always very difficult with a not dominant hand. The stickers actually lasted really well. which I'm happy about. And today we will do something lighter, maybe a baby boomer with some crystals. This one is solid. Okay, now I can uh, file away the old product and I'm using the K38 file, it's a really nice portable one and it's a long lasting, like I have it for ages, like never issues and travel, uh, travel with it and then the safety bit, which is awesome as well, especially when working with the not dominant hand, so I'm putting a slow settings and now I'm going to peel the carrots like a uh, file this way and I find that this is the easiest way for me to remove the product on my not dominant hand. And when I start doing um, my right hand with my left hand, I couldn't hold the file. I, my left hand was so useless, like um, I wasn't able to hold the brush, I wasn't able to hold the file. So definitely, guys, you need to um, practice. Like, And the more you will practice, the better results you will get. Okay, I'm trying to do a same pressure to don't create a holes. And then change the direction. This bit is really good because we can touch it so it's not going to hurt the skin, which is very useful, especially when we're working with the left hand. Okay, so I'm directing the safety part, the smooth part, on my cuticle side, so this way I can file it without of risking being cut. And this way my nail is prepped and the color is removed. There is no lifting, this one looks good, let's do on the next one. This one might be lifted a little because my natural nails are pretty long underneath. And with the ceiling collapse and the water leak we had it, I have been very harsh on my nails. And honestly, those peeling cuddled motion is kind of uh, best for, at least for me, for doing my not dominant hand for using my not dominant hand. It's 
section uplifted. I'm surprised because I bang it very strong with this needle. <laughs> Even this one. So my e-file is set up on the normal, um, it's just um, front settings. I don't put it onto the reverse doing this part. Because on the beginning I thought if I'm working with the left hand I should use the opposite settings but no, I, I find it much easier to work just with the normal settings. These nails actually have been pretty old. When I push back the cuticles you will be able to guys see the growth from them. My nails grow really slow. Yeah, that was just my after Christmas set, was it? I can't remember now, guys, but I had them on ages, actually. Yeah, cool. So I can clean it, everything. I will show you on those four nails and then I will do the farm on my own. Just so you know. Next step is to push back the cuticles. So I'm just taking the cuticle pusher and I can push back my cuticles, which are really messy because I have been bad for not applying the cuticle oil. Um, and you can also see the growth now, like that's it's pretty decent. Okay, so I'm just pushing back my cuticles. And then the next step is to do a bit of cuticle work. So I'm cleaning my e-file and I'm using a brush to clean any dust in there. But you have also guys asked me about what if there is some gel polish sometimes stuck in. Now, I'm not sure about the quality of the bits you are using, uh, but what I do with mine is, because it is a gel polish which is stuck in there, I'm putting it into the uh, soak off remover uh, for like, half a minute or so and then I remove it take a brush and just clean it like this and all those bits and pieces from the gel are coming off really easily like and it's not affecting the strength of the bit uh, but I believe it's depending on the coating you've got the same like with your tools some of them can um, corrode and some of them they don't corrode so uh, that's what I do with my bit okay now i'm just going slow settings again and we are going to do a bit of the cuticle work because a slots in there now as i say i didn't apply the cuticle oil and i love this one guys like because um, it also lifts the cuticles as well like the shape is really um, really nice and i find it pretty useful on reaching the places which might be difficult Okay, so I'm doing one side first. I think that's the worst my cuticles have been since a long time. And then reverse. So I'm only removing the tissue which is on the new plate, like I'm not tidying up the folds yet. Only everything which is on the new plate. I 
you can see it guys there is lots okay now I'm still on the reverse so clean my hands and then start cleaning the fold especially this part here I've got always lots in there because that's from holding the new brush really tight So I'm kind of brushing it away to the top. Now the only thing you need to remember is different nationalities got a different new faults and I find it like um, um, Polish people, Latvian girls, Russian girls, we've got slightly different faults than say example as Scottish girls. Um, our faults are more tough uh, so you can really go hardcore like I mean I'm doing very gentle work on my new faults uh, but I could keep going like that probably for a long, long time and nothing would happen. Why, when I'm doing a clients in a salon, I am much more gentle because their faults are completely different. They're not as hard, I would say. Okay, so that's my cuticles tied it up. And now I can clean it everything well and take a file. Now this is another really good stuff I want to show you because it was a pretty common question like how you work that you are not uh, cutting the clients. When we've got the brand new file it is extremely sharp in here. Like really sharp. Look what is... Mm, no this is the wrong place. Say I will show you here. No you can't see it. Oh here I will show you. There we are. So you can see it like it's making like on dry lines. And that's what we'll do with your cuticles. It can really cut the skin. So what you have to do it is you have to scratch it like really properly. And there will be bits and pieces coming off from it. So I've got it clean. No, that's this. Yeah. And then you should be able to see it. All this rough parts coming off. Okay. So like really properly those edges. And then when you go with your finger or when you go on the skin, it doesn't cut your skin anymore. So this way you can file safe without of cutting like and going really close to the cuticle. So now I'm just filing my natural nail plate. So giving a couple scratches. And with my left hand, I find it like um, this is the best motion for me. So I'm not jumping all over the nail. I'm just uh, doing uh, the same motion. So like around the cuticle, I'm working with this uh, rounded part. And also pushing the cuticle with my file as well. Like I find that this is the best motion. So this way I've got blended all the old product. Now let me reshape the nails quickly. So one side, other side into a V-shape. File the free edge and shorten the nails. Obviously with all the housework I need to have them a bit shorter. <laughs> okay, I'm removing the bulk uh, of the product from the free edge. And then this nail is ready for a gel application. Okay, it's already looks not too bad. Now we are going to do exactly the same on this one. So those V-shape, free edge. And then blend everything out and remove the bulk of the product from the free edge. Because if we shorten the nails, the free edge becomes thicker and thicker because of its structure. OK, 
Okay, and you can see already the shape is much more improved. So now let's brand everything around the cuticle. Like really nice and properly. And then move on into the next meal. So again, you can see the difference already. Shorten the free edge, check if they're the same length. And then file like as quick as possible actually. So obviously with my right hand when I'm only holding the file I'm much quicker. When I was clipping the gems, I think I have clipped a little bit off from the corner, but I'm not worried about it. We will feel it really easy with the gel. And same on this one. So this is actually the first tutorial we're recording after the disaster in the living room in our studio. And uh, yeah, I'm planning guys to go live as well on the Saturday. So today is a 13th. So that is going to be the 20th of February. Uh, so yeah, guys, I hope to see you there and then we can have a wee Q&I session. Uh, as well because you've got fantastic questions okay that's my nails already and we shape a little bit so I'm just going to take a brush clean everything well and now before I apply any product I'm always doing an inspection again and check if there is any other places I want to touch up okay so there is one place here Something in there. I don't want to have any fill lines, especially that we are going to go for a baby boomer as well. So I need to make sure this is all really nicely blended. And actually I was right, this nail is lifted a little bit in here. Because I felt it, I knew it, it is lifted. So I just have to quickly file it, it more. You cannot apply any fresh product on top of the uh, product which is lifting. So I have to quickly file this away. And when we're working with the lifting, uh, you really need to cut it away like so it doesn't, doesn't go bigger. So I'm filing away and kind of push all the air to the one side. Like I don't want to file it at more inside because it's more on the one side. Blend that out. Okay, 
and now we can apply a fresh product. Okay, so clean all the dust really properly. Clean the Neil's Vita Blue Scrub, which is a Neil dehydrator. Like really well. And then an extra Neil prep. And we always apply the new prep and the universal airborne on the natural new only. There is no need of applying it on top of the gel. So universal airborne is like our base gel, which work as a double sided tape. Okay, I have to make sure I've got plenty on this one. And it helps the chill at her really well, really, really well. And now we can apply the gel. Because I'm going to go for a baby boomer, we will use the fiber gel in a light rose. So just open it up. My gel brush. So I'm always having a clean wipe in here to keep my brush intact. Pick up a small scoop of the product on the one side of my brush and press it really kind of decent into the nail plate. You really want to press it decent. By pressing it decent you also get a better adhesion as well. And I'm just doing it on all the nails. If you keep the product on the one side of the brush, then it is much easier to do this and you get a cleaner application. Okay, straight away I'm going to fix this missing corner and then give it a cure. I want to do it full cure, like to make sure this thin layer is uh, cured properly. Because first of all, if the product is cured properly, it is going to last really nice and long time. And secondly, um, uh, obviously on cured product might cause the allergies as well. So I'm always kind of uh, very curious about it. And I want to make sure I've got all the product properly cured. You don't want to also touch on cured product with your hands as well. Especially when we're working with the acrylics, I think the gel is a little bit uh, safer-ish. Yeah. Okay, so I'm curing it properly and then we can build up the apex, shape the needles and do a beautiful baby boomer. I'm actually thinking maybe of Swarovski crystals pixie as well. So now let's build the apex. Again, nice and thin layer because this thin layer is going to help us spread the gel nice. Like cap the free edge, go with your brush really well. And pick up a scoop for the apex. Because we already have this some old structure in there, you don't want to overdo it. So you really want to fill up this gap, like kind of move the apex. And then even out the gel. So I've got like a really big blob of the product on my apex. The side view actually show it and then spreading the rest of the product. If I would apply it too close to the cuticle, it would really run. That's why I'm always concentrating only in the middle. And then once I'm happy, I can give it a cure. It don't need to be full cure at this stage because we're still going to apply the gel on the other nails. So I'm just freezing the product so it's not going to run and then can move on straight into another nail. So 
So exactly the same, nice and thin layer. So we've got two thin layers around the cuticle area. And this is plenty, like you don't want like lots of product there because you want this product to be nicely blended with your natural nail. And same at the free edge, we had so much product from the previous application that you don't want to apply much more in there. But we need to build up the apex, which have moved down the middle of the nail. And then once I'm happy, I can give it a cure. And then another one, so a couple seconds longer. Scoop for apex. And obviously, the smaller the growth is, the younger the nails, the quicker the rebalance job is going to be. I have to actually add quite a lot of products because they have been on for ages. And then give it a cure. Then pinky. And a small apex. When I'm building the apex, I am, I'm not pressing strong with my brush. I'm really gentle, because uh, if you press too strong, you are creating the holes. So I'm pressing strong to remove the excess of the product from the free edge, but uh, at the apex place, I'm very gentle. Apex. Got some missing gap in here. So just checking any other places. And it's easier for me to add this product after the nails are built and just add those missing places rather than trying to perfect it when I've got so much product on my nails because then the gel could run and we could end up with a really big mess. On the pinky, on the pinky I'm not bothered that it is going to run because we have pretty small amount of the product and this, the smaller amount of the product uh, the longer it can kind of stay on the nails before it starts running. So I can close all that, cure my nails properly, and then I will show you quickly the shaping just before we move into the design part. Okay, so before I put my brush on the side, I need to clean it properly. Get it into the nice shape. Okay, so that's a nice shape. That's the brush clean, and then put it away from the sun. And before we start filing, I'm just putting the wipe in here so it's uh, not as messy. And then UV cleanser to remove the inhibition layer. And we can shape the nails. I will show you the shaping guys on those two and then the rest I will do it on myself. Plus the thumb, I will do it on myself. And the reason I pick up those two nails because the this one is much longer, my natural nail underneath, so it's going to be more difficult. And this one has the sneak, so I will show you how to sort it as well. Okay, so I'm starting with a nice V shape. And I want you to see the filing lines. And I'm using those blue files, they are 100 by 180, like 
the multifunction ones. I really like them. Okay, so we can see it how I'm filing those V shape. Now I'm lifting the nail up because I don't want this bulk on the sides. Okay, we have already filed the bulk here. Same on the other side. We have to blend everything around the cuticle area. So like really well blended and So again, you can see where I have filed. Let me clean it. Okay, all the cuticle area. Then I'm checking if the nail is straight and what about the free edge. So I need to touch up the free edge and touch up this side a little bit and then lift it up because I've got bulk of the product there. And once I have finished um, sorting out those places, I'm going to smooth out the entire nail. And this is the best motion. So same, actually the same as we was filing for the product removal. And I'm working with the both sides of the file equally, like the 100 grit takes more product off and 180 less product off. And that's it, like basically that's my new shape. I just have to use the buffer. So after buffing it, it looks much nicer and then buff even around the cuticle area even more like making sure that you cannot see it where the nail is starting. Same on this one. So we had those sneak in here, one side, other side. already looks better. Blend everything around the cuticle area. You can also see the angle of my uh, file as well, like it goes at this angle, so I'm not cutting my cuticles. <laughs> and then I actually <laughs> went with the file over there. Yeah, so it is really important how we hold the file around the cuticle area. I like to clean the nail as well constantly so I can see what is going on in there. So this way I can easy judge which other places I need to file and this is definitely the site here. Okay, and then once you're happy with it, we are going to buff it with the buffer. And this is the biggest like a change for the shape. It's becoming much smoother and much nicer. But it still has scratches, so the gel polish is going to stick to that. And then clean it.
Okay, I'm going to file the other two needles and quickly infill the thumb and then we can move on into the design. Okay, that's them all shaped and clean and now we can use the paint on French gel which is really nicely pigmented to do the baby boomer. So I'm just slapping a very small amount of the gel into my needles. You can actually see the difference in the ones where my natural needle is so grown, like you can see it guys like it's almost halfway through. Uh, I should actually cut, cut them and sculpt the fresh one, but I need to have some needles removed for help, so there is no point of me doing a fresh ones if they get to be removed. And what I'm doing is I'm just uh, massaging, kind of rubbing in those baby boomer with my sponge okay i love this sponging technique it's very very quick and the first part you're doing guys has to be really really thin like hardly visible actually uh, if you want to have a really nice blending So I've got extremely small amount of the product. The paint on French is so highly pigmented that if you would put too much, uh, the blending would be really strong and we want it very delicate. Okay, because the only part we're interested on is this middle part, the part where the white joins in with the pink. I'm not bothered about the free edge yet and the intensity of the color. I only want to blend the part where the pinks meet white, okay? And after this part is done, we can pick up another scoop of the product and then we will be dabbing. Okay, so now I'm picking up another scoop of the product. Apply this in. I'm, I'm, using, uh, uh, I'm using exactly the same technique for a color baby boomer as well. And it's worked fantastic. So I'm just adding a, a drop of paint on French gel to any uh, gel polish I choose because with the gel polish it will be extremely difficult to achieve this result. Gel polish is too thin in the consistency and the sponge would absorb it all. So now I'm dabbing and I'm not going as high as I did with my first uh, first uh, layer of the paint on French. So now I'm just dabbing. I didn't cure the product yet. I mean, everything what I'm doing is a real time. I don't cut out like speed out things because uh, then it is difficult to understand the process. Okay, so I'm just dabbing it in. And then once I dab it in, I can give it a cure. The sponge always lands on the piece of um, form or sealer tape just to protect it from any dust which might land on it. And then after the first first go is cure, we can apply the second one. And on top on top of those needles, we are going to use the glamour from the indigo. Uh, so it is called glamour silver, and the brand is indigo. You can just uh, I think they've got distributors in a few different countries. So just say search indigo glamour silver, and you will be able uh, to get this pigment. It's pr quite pricey. Um, but it is really lots of pigment in there, so it will last you a very long time and it's definitely worth uh, spending those couple pounds extra compared to those cheaper uh, pigments because there is more of this pigment in there. Okay, my first layer is cured. And now we are going to go round two. So I'm applying my paint on French gel. funny angles so the camera can catch it. Again dabbing, like lots of dabbing motion, lots of dabbing motion. Lots of dabbing motion. 
Just remember, don't go as high as you did uh, with your first blending, because then you might have too strong results. And the baby boomer has to be very delicate. I, I think it's the first time I'm actually doing it with the left hand. So I'm pretty curious of the end results. Okay, and the same. So just a little bit at the free edge. And now I'm not going that high. I'm only blending this part very little because I want the end to be pretty pigmented. And then give it a cure. Okay, cure it really well and then if it's needed on the sponge we've got still tiny bits of the uh, paint on fringe left so what you can do it and um, when the nails are short that would be enough but when the nails are longer what you can do is use this part of the paint on fringe which you've got on your sponge just to add a couple more dabs just a couple more You get an even nicer results. You don't have to do this step, but if you wanted it to be really, really nice, then I suggest you do it. And then give it a cure. So we are going to close the products now. And on the nails, which we will place the glamour, we have to put the no wipe top gel. And I'm also thinking about some Swarovski crystals pixie. I think it would be really nice as well. So I'm cleaning my finger for the uh, pigment application. Yeah, I would go for Swarovski Pixie as well. Why not? We'll do it on the ring finger. So on our ring finger, I'm going to apply the Soak of Base Gel. So I'm just applying a decent amount of the soak of base gel. Thin up the edge is pretty thick in the middle. And because the base gel has inhibition layer, I'm just going straight away with the no wipe top gel, which doesn't have inhibition layer. Just so I don't have to clean this inhibition layer. And then we are going to sprinkle it with those crystals. Now I don't have the tree, the tray, so I will just use this to catch any crystals. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Okay, I'm just sprinkle the entire nail. Remove any excess and then going to grab some sponge and tap it so the crystals are going to stay on. And I really love it on top of the baby boomer. I think it looks so pretty. I never like the um, crystals to be too close at the free edge. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm moving them a little bit into the places I want. And I kind of press it with the sponge. So this way they are not just sprinkle on top, but they really kind of go inside the base gel. And they are going to stay and they are not going to be as catchy. Okay, by pressing them down. This is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. 
think I want more. What else you could do it is take some old brush and if it's needed pick up uh, crystals. So I'm just going to add a couple more. And I've got here a mixture because the Swarovski Crystals Pixie, I'm talking about the, um, the true Swarovski Crystals Pixie, not like a kind of uh, cheaper ones which we can get. They come in two sizes. One is H and one is uh, Petite. The Petite ones, that's those tiny ones. The smallest ones is a Petite. And then those large ones, it is the H. I'm not a fan of the H and uh, I didn't knew it. They are two different sizes. Uh, so I kind of mix it, uh, I added a little bit of those uh, petite ones into my H bottle because uh, the H ones uh, were just too big, like I find them more catchy and uh, pretty annoying, I would even say. But when they mix it together, they kind of create a smoother surface, uh, really nice and sparkly. Once I'm happy with it, I can put it inside the lamp and give it a flash cure. But to save the time, I'm not going to fully cure it, only a um, couple seconds and then we can apply the uh, top coat for the glamour. Okay, so now on the rest of the nails, we are going to apply the High Shine No Wipe Top Gel. And I think it will give a fantastic result in a combination with the Swarovski Crystals Pixie. And because I had uh, dark black nails, I think I will be really happy to wear something lighter now. When applying the top coat, try to kind of check it, uh, how it looks under the light, if there is any dust particles or anything like that. Because uh, uh, the glamours and any kind of pigments don't like any dust. They will enlarge those particles and make it look um, much uglier and bigger. So we have to make sure the top coat is applied really nicely. So on the thumb, yeah, I've got some dust in here. So I have just cleaned it on a clean sponge and reapplied the top coat. And then give it a cure. So I'm curing my top coat 60 seconds for the chromes application and that gives me a really uh, good results. And obviously when my top coat is curing, the base is curing as well. That's why I wanted to only freeze the uh, pixie crystals because uh, there was no point to give it full cure if we still have to put the hand inside for the chrome. Okay, that's it cooked. And then I'm just dabbing in pigment and it looks so beautiful like really 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 nice effect just because we've got those baby boomer underneath it looks really amazing on the pink color as well so like going for a pink baby boomer would look absolutely beautiful too. Now I'm just going to rub this pigment really really well because uh, if you've got any dusty particles uh, then the pigment will look not as shiny. So I need to make sure I don't have any of that. With the silicone tool you can also go very close to the cuticle part and kind of rub it in there. Now 
Then using a dust brush, I'm just going to remove excess of the pigment. Because if you've got those particles, it will show. So I'm really properly cleaning the nails. And then giving a couple scratches. Those scratches are necessary for the pigment to last. So you just scratch the free edge. And the reason for it is the high shine no wipe top gel or any kind of no wipe top gel uh, is a top coat without of inhibition layer. So the next uh, uh, next top coat might chip from it, peeling the pigment as well. That's why I'm giving those scratches so the top coat can stick and much better. Because this is so sparkly, I'm also thinking maybe I should put a small gem in here as well. Just a tiny one. And I'm actually going to go for those pearls. Now guys, those pearls are one of my favorite things. Uh, i show you them. Now this is bad. Uh, but basically, I got those um, gems off from eBay, and I'm I'm loving them. They are best ones ever. Uh, they are my favorite ones. The first pack of those pearls I got in Australia on the trade show, and then obviously I was searching for a similar one once they have finished, and I find the seller on eBay. The only problem I had, they're amazing, they're so beautiful, but... Just watch for that, guys, like, because obviously I'm only giving you um, the stuff which I'm really loving. So I love the crystals, but I were not happy because the amount of the crystals was not as described, which means I this here, it was supposed to be 50 crystals, if I could remember 50. Yes, 50. So it says even on the package 50 crystals. <laughs> and I mean, you can see it straight away with your naked eye there is no 50 crystals in there and same there was supposed to be 50 here as well again there is no 50 crystals uh, so i don't want to give you the link to the seller in case if it, it would happen to you as well uh, because they just say like i'm, I'm wrong like <laughs> i didn't content it correct but uh, the crystals so that's the seller and it is on ebay and the crystals are called 2080 four and that's a smaller size and the bigger size actually as well um, so this is size 16 the bigger ones and this is a size uh, ss10 for the smaller ones and i love them they're amazing the color doesn't come off from them like the quality and everything is spot on it's just the the amount of the crystals uh, so just watch for that guys when you when you're ordering um, something unusual for me to do it but uh, Obviously, I was really disappointed. And I love those crystals. So where is my old brush? Uh, she says couple crystals and now she puts lots. I think they look so nice that it is worth The only problem with those crystals is you cannot find them anywhere else, like, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> now I need some clear packaging. And I find that picking them up from the box is much easier than from the paper. We are not going to overdo it. Uh, obviously, we don't want to hide all the baby boomer which we have created. Just a couple, because they're so beautiful.
Okay, so I'm just moving them into the right place. Yeah, pretty. <laughs> Give it a flash cure. Just so the pinky doesn't feel lonely, we are going to add a small drop and sodos on the fan and put a single crystals there. So on the pinky, the smaller one, and then the larger one on the thumb. Flash cure. And then the top coat, and basically uh, that's the set finished. I know, guys, you're liking doing, uh, or you're liking watching the tutorials when I'm doing the real nails. Uh, obviously, we're not allowed to do it on the clients, so... I will do something completely different on my other one, uh, other hand. Who cares if I'm working with two different hands? I mean, normally I do care, but now I really don't care. So I will be working with two different hands <laughs> and I will do some pink set uh, on my other hand. Just so you've got more interesting videos. I'm not applying the top coat over the crystals and when I'm putting the top coat I'm really touching the free edge as well like with the pressure of my brush like pretty decent amount for the chrome and then on the thumb Actually, the fam got some dust particles, so they are visible, and I've got one more dust particle in here. I shouldn't be rushing as much with the top coat, and when this happens, we should take it off and reapply it again. I'm just going to give it a cure and then show you the final results of this set. But I love those pearly crystals, and I love the Swarovski combination, and the glamour, I think, is all kind of very delicate. It could be almost like a wedding set. Um, so something a little bit different after all those dark colors which I wear on my nails and they so old like but I think they still look pretty good and it's a shame for me to take them off I really don't want to uh, but I will take them off as well and show you some slightly different design uh, just so you've got something more interesting to watch if you are new in here Hit the subscribe button there is about 400 uh, tutorials to watch and I try to also uh, sort them out into the playlist so if you're interested on a specific subject just search like um, Palitzka Mother's Day Nails or Palitzka Baby Boomer Nails or Chrome Nails any kind of subject and uh, you will be able to to find either those videos or a full playlist okay so that's my nails uh, all cured and I can show you because it looks absolutely beautiful. Cameraman is showing. Come on, show, show closer. Yeah, so the glamour gives really those kind of pearly effect to it. Uh, really beautiful. Uh, so as a last step, I'm just cleaning my hand with the baby wipe and apply the cuticle oil because obviously this is uh, exchanging the full look as well, like when the nail folds are really nice and clean. And I love the smell of this one. Um, it's actually coconuts ish or vanilla. I don't know what is a smell. It's a kind of mystery. Uh, but I love the smell of this cuticle oil. Okay, so cuticle oil on. And you can see how nicely they shine. Yeah, I hope you have really enjoyed watching this tutorial. Glittery hacks and bye for now.